Hello, everyone. Hello, Welcome indeed. Welcome to the Random Podcast of Awesomeness. With Gerdet14 and Shadow Wolf. And Shadow Wolf. So today, I picked the game. Yes. Yeah. And we played the game Scribblenauts for the DS. Yes, we did. Now, there is no real story to this game. Indeed, uh, there is not. Uh, Basically, this is a puzzle platformer. That's what I would call it, at least. Yes, indeed. Uh, and in this game, in order to solve the puzzles to get through the level, you are able to write in words to make objects appear on screen to use. Mm-hmm. Like table, and shark, and sun. Yes. is. Almost indefinite on how many things you can actually do. You That's not entirely true. There is, in fact, a definite amount. Of well, there is. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of things you can get. A lot of things yeah. that you probably don't know are things like yes. now being a Japanese battleship or a quart or a uh, quark. Do proper nouns, so you can't do like say Will Smith, or you can do something like. That's uh, a brand name, so you can't write Nintendo or something. But if you do type in Will Smith, you may end up with a person that is, that works as a smithy, so... That's very true. hmm That's something we will talk about. I certainly hope so. Even though it was, wasn't really a big factor on my, on my particular uh, gameplay. No, um, no, before really. we get into the gameplay, there we we really should, co- we really should cover everything else because the gameplay here is what it is rather simple, but at the same time, oh dear God, the complexities that are here. Now you would think this this game, I mean by just what we've been talking about, probably for a casual gamer. I wouldn't say it's for a hardcore gamer. I'd say it's for someone who's like an intermediate player. Uh, I, I would say that too, it, at least for the uh, puzzle sections of the game, but the yeah. action sections, oh no, you definitely need to know what you're doing ahead of time in order to get these ac- the action sections going, going off. The game is divided into two different types of puzzle, pu- puzzle platforming, a puzzle-heavy level and then an action-heavy level, with the advanced, level, and with the advanced uh, option being there for those of us who think that we can create enough shit to actually go through it multiple times. Now, uh, in the puzzle, in the puzzle-oriented uh, levels, you will you will be able to well, you are supposed to create enough words using the uh, Scribblenauts uh, dictionary in order to solve whatever whatever problem uh, is uh, you know present. Like say the chef wants you to prepare to uh, uh, a main course, a beverage, and a dessert. Well, you can pretty much do that. All you really need is a soda, lasagna, and some ice cream. Boom. Right. Whereas in the advanced portion of the puzzle levels, at least, you'll be asked to do this multiple times with differ- with differing items each time. Going back to the chef level, that's really early on, you can use a lasagna, soda, ice cream. Again, they'll let you do the same one that you solved it with uh, originally. And then you can use cake, water, and uh, uh, soup. I remember using soup. Yeah, there's all sorts of variations you could have used. Mm-hmm. The only thing is that you can't use the same thing again, so... Right. It will actually tell you that you've already used it. Uh, some of these levels, you will notice, are... or at least appear to be impossible. Like, there are actually three levels that are done completely in the dark. And you have to figure out ways to at least have some light. Are these are these also Pi two or three are par two or three levels? Uh I think these are like par four levels. Okay, par four is okay with with total darkness because just type in sun and it should work. Right, sun sun helps a little bit, not much. Really? Not much at all. You wow. see an outline. 
you see an outline of stuff. That's pretty much it. Oh. They're coated with magical cloaking devices. And even then, it's still hard to see. And even then, it's still hard to see. Uh, so like Gurdett was just talking about, uh, par means how many objects you should be required to actually use in order to beat the level. Yes, although and it is now, quite possible to shoot under par in almost every stage. Uh, you can. And this going adds over up par, to your I don't. I have yet to finish a level by going over par. I'm just so I'm so I'm such a stickler for it. But uh, going over par, all it's really going to do is de uh, de decrease the amount of allers that you earn at the end of the level. And you use allers, and and you earn allers by completing the level swiftly with different with differing items, and depending on how on how many items that you used. Right. So, for example, a par three level, but that you manage to do with only two item creations. Oh, look! You get a bunch more. You get a bunch more allers for that. And the allers are used to buy levels. And to buy avatars and the and soundtrack music in the game, right? And that's actually a small complaint that I have, because when I was playing this, for some reason, my buttons weren't actually showing up that well. So you know, uh, so I did not realize that I had to spend dollars in order to unlock the next worlds. So I went all the way through World 1, both uh, puzzle and action, which was a pain in the ass, but I did it. And then when World 2 didn't unlock from that, I was like, well, what do I have to do? Turns out, you have to spend allers to unlock uh, worlds in this game. Not individual levels, but entire worlds. And for the most part, the worlds are, uh, uh, are appropriately priced. I think like the uh, last two are a bit high, but... Uh, you need like twenty five yeah. grand in order to unlock the last world. I mean, uh I've beaten this game before, but this time around I didn't beat it, but I still was able to buy everything. So you're definitely gonna go over what you actually need. Yes. At least assuming that you can complete the action puzzles unlike me. I screwed up pretty hard er early on. And I ended up buying like over almost all of the soundtrack pieces because I was like, I can't figure out what else to use these for. And then I saw that I needed to use them to buy worlds. I was rather frustrated at the game at that point. And that's really a motif that carries through through most of this game for me. Really, really frustrating. Right. I mean, this game does have its points where you get very frustrated. In particular, in our particular, any 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 one of the given action puzzles. Oh look! Find a way past this tornado. Oh yeah, and that's one of the earlier ones too. The game is clearly meant that for you to go through all of the puzzle levels first, and then come back for the action levels, because the action levels, even early on, are just so much more difficult and. Uh, so much more difficult than the uh, puzzle levels, and their hints are really weird too. Now, for example, the uh, hint for the tornado level that yeah. happens early on is, "No, I, uh, we're not in Kansas anymore." Oh wait, and you're like, "What the hell do I do with that?" Right. And no, the I tornado mean, does not send you out to Wonderland. I mean, there's variety of ways to get past it. Yeah, the uh, way that I ended up using was uh, l lassoing onto the steel blocks that are on top. That's pretty much the only way I, c I figured out how to do it, and even then it was a pain in the butt to actually do. Uh, my favorite way to do it is actually using a shrink ray on the tornado. Using a what? You can use a shrink ray on the tornado. That makes no sense. Mind you, Might with all sense, of the science but... fiction stuff that you can get in here, I'm not surprised that there is a shrink ray, but it never occurred to me to try and to to actually, you know, alter the tornado in any way. I mean, I did summon up my own tornado to try and combat it, and that didn't work. Yeah, that doesn't work. My The tornado that I created ended up getting bounced all over the place by the opposing tornado. 
Uh, also, ragdoll physics. Ragdoll physics everywhere. <laughs> you thought Line Rider had lag ragdoll physics. You ain't seen how creative ragdoll physics can be, my friend. Mm. Mm, your your character moves so just just so horridly. He really does, and he and he controls poorly too. And it really does take a, a huge. Uh, uh, it's a really huge impact on the individual gameplay elements. Like flight, for example, there are plenty of items that you can create that allow you to have temporary flight, like jetpack and wings. Jetpack is the best one, but it's so impossible to control, it's like, why did I bother? Mm. And these items have limited, these items do in fact have a limited charge on them. Yeah, it's very hard to control things that give you temporary flight. It's not just hard to control. The game doesn't tell you that they have li that they have a limited charge on them. I created a pair of wings, and I'm like, okay, I know it's probably going to have some limitations, but what is its limit? Well, you get about three to four seconds of flight, and then you drop down and have to wait three to four seconds before it recharges. I didn't really notice that too much because I actually I love using the wings to solve things. It works so well. Uh, but yeah, I can see that being a problem if you experience that. I it's, know I experienced but it's, that. That's not the only. That's not the only thing, though. It's not just that the flight that flight feels really wonky because it really does feel that it damn does. wonky. Moving around Maxwell, you know, it has a tendency to continue going on long after I've long after I've ended the input because he's still trying to reach that objective and he thinks that he can get there when it's quite clear that he can't. Yeah. Movement AI in this th in this game just isn't nearly up to par with what it should be. Now a lot of pe a lot of players are going to criticize me and say that oh well that's part of the challenge of the game. Yeah, but it adds an unnecessary layer of challenge. One of the early action puzzles involves uh, trying to utilize both flight and movement effectively in order to get to the starite. It's just ugh. So very much ugh. Yeah. I find myself in the action puzzles just trying to spam black hole and hoping it works. Yes, uh, black holes can be a lot of fun to use. Oh, and as tempting as it is, don't use nuke, okay? Actually, there is one level where you actually can use nuke in win. I really? I actually... I actually found that out, and there's only one level you can do it. That's really weird, because Nuke, Nuke kills everything on the screen that it can, including you. Right. I nuked myself and a Megalodon many a times. Because there's actually one stage where the object of the game is a puzzle level. You're supposed to destroy everything in the room. So if you destroy everything in the room, it actually does get you the star right. And before you completely die with the nuke, you actually get the star right. Ah. Uh, now, are you only allowed one or two objects? Uh, I forget with that one. I think it might be three. Yeah, but with that, you could probably just use black hole, because... Yeah, you can. I mean, for the advanced stuff, you obviously want to try and use nuke, but... Well, yeah, there's... <laughs> Most of the time, you're not going to use Nuke, because it kills you. Yes. But Black Hole and Quark, totally okay, assuming that you know where to put them. And if you are actually good enough to, you can actually, like, use the Black Hole to pull things toward you. Yes. And just, like, let go of the Black Hole, so that it's far enough away where it's not pulling on that object anymore. Right. And one of the nice things, while well, we're actually talking about like moving objects, you you can move an object to anywhere where you want on the screen. Assuming that you can interact with it. For the most part, it. right. Yeah, uh, if you create an object, you have infinite interact interactivity with it. You can move it wherever the hell you want. However, uh, because this would you know absolutely destroy a large portion of the puzzles and make Maxwell totally pointless. Most the items that are already in that are already in the level, you cannot move any any time you want. 
Maxwell has to interact with items that are already in the level in order to complete it. Right. Uh, which which is probably a good thing. It is definitely a good thing, actually. Otherwise, it would probably make the game too easy. It would. No, but the thing uh, is, I uh, kind of miss... I, I kind of wish the game was a bit easier. This is going to sound incredibly unfair, but I only managed to complete the first two worlds on the puzzle, and I only got halfway through World 2 in action. I spent most of my most of my time uh, given to trying to review this, trying not to play this. This is not a bad game, but this it, its difficulty curves really really turned me off to it. No, I, I personally I do enjoy the challenge. It just gets frustrating when you have to play the level over and over again. And it's not just that I have to play the levels over and over again. It's like, okay, what did I learn from that experience? I learned that I can't right. really use this particular item here because I'm not entirely sure what happened. Uh, the other thing I wanted to add about that, though, is when you play a level, it starts up and it shows you everything pretty much in that level. And then you go through a block of text telling you what to do. Now, if you die, you have to do it all over again mm -hmm. with all of that again. Yep. These levels do not have checkpoints, which makes sense given that they're, that they're a single puzzle. Right. I just wish that it didn't show me the level all over again along with the block of text. Yeah, it, it, draws, it draws out the level and experience a bit, but it's not really a big problem that I've got. Right. It's just something they could have done to make it a little more enjoyable. Right. Uh, so let's see here. Talking about a lot of the gameplay. Uh, Is there an actual ending uh, cinematic at the end of this? No, there's no actual cinematic. Not even an ending cutscene? No, not really. Dude... Well, uh, Shadow, have you actually done all of the advanced uh, puzzles and all of the advanced actions? I have. Wow. You are a god of this game, Shadow. There's there's no real other way to explain it, because I know for a, for, a, for a fact that I would not be able to do that. I had enough trouble getting through the advanced puzzle sections of the first world. And I didn't even try to do the advanced action sections of World 1. God, no. Well, there's really not much point to do it. it you get additional dollars for it, meaning that you right. can get access to the later uh, worlds faster. I was able to purchase up to World 5. Yeah, I, I got pretty far just doing like the advanced ones in the first level. Uh, how about we... I, I kind of feel like we should go into discussing the graphics. The graphics in this definitely—you can tell that this is a game that is based on alongside the concept. Everything in this game looks like it is made out of origami papers. Everything. Pretty much, yeah. Especially the especially the animal especially the animals. Maxwell and most and most of the weapons that he can use. Don't really look that mu mu that way, but all the animals look like they're from they're from uh, origami they're from an origami class. This Which isn't is a bad thing. Right. It really it matches up with the rest of the world because it does look pretty. It does look pretty cartoony. At the same time, um, when your big sister comes in and sees you playing this game, she's like, "Isn't that game supposed to be for you know uh, younger people than you?" <laughs> Because I mean, these these graphics do look very very kiddy, and it lures you in with how simple it looks, and then it keeps you there forever and ever. It does. In a way, I, I kind of feel like I have an addiction to this game when I start playing it. Because... Thankfully, um, I'm not good enough at this game to actually get that damn addiction. 
I'm tempted to try out Super Scribble Launch though, because as you as you've mentioned, Super Scribble Launch uh, allows the use of adjectives, yes. whereas adjectives do not function in this game, despite a lot of the in-game a lot of the in-game levels having adjectives for their boxes, like Big Steel Box or Big Box. I mean, there are a few things in this game that actually you can use like big with or large or whatever. I didn't know. Like, I didn't see that. I tried to use big box and I got a normal beside and I got a normal sized box. Uh, well, one of the ones that I know right off is uh, air vent. You can use air vents to push things. Um, that's not really an adjective though. That's a that's a double word noun. No, no, I'm not done. So there's there are small ones and then there's large ones. Ah. So that is actually something you can use an adjective with, but that's pretty much there's not really too many of those uh, items that you can do. Right. Although the sheer amount of things you can create in this game is hilarious. Oh look, I was able to summon a Leviathan. Yes, you can there are so many like supernatural sort of things you can summon in this game. There are two different dragon sprites. Uh, this game is just fun, just for like exploring the physics. Yes, exploring the physics, exploring with what you can do with what you can create. That all of that is freaking amazing in this game, which is why I think that this game isn't a bad game. It's just certainly not something for me, because I can do all that individual creation stuff. On the on the home screen. Uh, so yeah, you don't actually have to leave the main screen if you don't want to. Uh, and while we're actually talking about the main screen, when you start the game, you are in the main screen, and you can actually type in objects. And actually, there are certain objects you can type in, like say vampire, they'll unlock different levels, sort of. No, different backgrounds for the main different screen. I haven't unlocked all of them, but I've unlocked uh, all but, I think, three or four. And these actually correspond to the actual levels in the game. While you're not actually playing in the puzzles, there are there's the buy section, which we, which we talked about. You can buy the avatars and the soundtrack. And there's also a level creator, which you can create your own levels... I don't know if there's a way to share them. It didn't look like it. Uh, they're, they're, uh, you forget about the DS had a wireless link up. Right. And that's, I think, how you're supposed to share these levels. You're supposed to uh, uh, connect to a friend that also had scribble knots, and then you could send them that way. You might be able to. I, I didn't actually see a thing for sharing it, but mm. that's very possible. This game has crazy physics. Very crazy physics. Did you listen to the sound? What did you think of the soundtrack? Um, as far as I know, there's like one, two, maybe three pieces of of music in this whole game, which I know is bullcrap because of how immense the soundtrack is. Yet I don't remember anything other than the uh, other than the main theme from like World One. Yeah, that one really. And out. the thing is, the main the the theme from World One sounds like Yoshi's Island. Sort of. I can't. I can't escape that it really does sound like Yoshi's Island from like either the GBA or the SNES. Now the sound, the music isn't actually that bad. It's not, but that's the only thing that I remember at all. Yeah, it's kind of funny when you think about it because if you go to purchase the soundtrack, there are actually about I want to say there's like uh, there's anywhere between songs. like tw- uh, anywhere between twenty and forty different uh, songs in this game. Right. And I don't remember any of them. Right. You don't really hear very many, but there is a extensive song list that you can actually listen to. Mm-hmm. Not that I mind that. That's I guess that's something to... I guess that's one of the goals in the game is to be able to purchase all the songs and listen to them. But, I, but if that was the case, I still wish that they would have actually incorporated them into the levels. Right. Because, uh, that I just don't think that they're even there. I really don't. No, not really. For the most part, it's just the same repetitive song. Mm, yeah, the same Yoshi's Island theme playing right. in the background at almost all times. It's a good track, sure, but play something different. What else did you want to talk about, Fredette? 
Um, other than the controls that I think are at, that I think are absolute shit. Um, I just can't really get myself to come back to this. I I have enough troubles trying to get myself to play this, let alone come back to it. I find that the action puzzles and the, the action levels in this are way too frustrating, give, uh, given well, what I'm supposed to be trying to do. Well, the one I'm stuck on right now, I think it's like 2, 4, or 5. I've got to use this. I have to do a, a complicated switch puzzle to get to the starlight, and there are ninjas, zombies, and vampires all in my way, and I get six items. Uh. Normally... What I'll do is, I don't know if you knew this, but for switches, you can actually use lightning on the switches. No, I did not know that you could use lightning on the switches. I haven't even tried to bring out lightning. Or something to, like, electrocute the switches. Right. Which activates them. It's very interesting. And a lot of times, just to get through a puzzle, it's almost worth it just to kill everything and then go through the puzzle. But here's the thing, I can't even position myself to kill these guys without using a large portion of my items. And if I use a large portion of my items, then I end up at, I end up having uh, five items used and only two guys dead. Now, this is... This is more of a problem with my lack of creativity in this particular game. I admit yeah. that. But how, how, how non-linear this can really be... I I really I really don't enjoy playing this game. I I need a bit yeah, more direction than a can... simple hint. Yeah. It's why I don't really consider that's why I can't play Skyrim. Oh look, I can do everything. What do I do? That's actually another thing we didn't touch on though is the fact that you have a meter and each time you use an item that goes on the screen, it will use up how much of the items you can actually put on the screen at a time. Yes, there is a limit. It's there's not just a par limit. There's an actual limit of items that you can uh, experience right. that you can have on the screen. Here's here's the thing. I find this meter to be completely arbitrary, because um, if in any of the lower par uh, any of the lower par stages, I never find myself running out of this damn meter. Matter of fact, I barely find myself using up half of it. For the most part, you're not going to be using up the whole thing. But if you're just screwing around, you might end up finding out that, oh... I can't I bring I out can't. anything more. But I wanted to right. summon Godzilla, which you can't because Godzilla is copyrighted. Though you could summon a dragon sort of creature. Yes, you uh, could summon multiple dragons. But yeah, that, that can be frustrating. Uh... A lot of times you don't need to summon two of the same object. You can just move it from one place to the next. Mm -hmm. Like what Gerdet was saying with his level, he had like five objects, and yet he couldn't really do it. What he could do is he could like summon, say, a something that cannot really die, like a blob. You can summon blobs. <laughs> They're these green oozy creatures that do not die. Uh, they, you can kill them, but for the most part, as long as they're fighting something, they do not die. Right. I didn't actually consider going into the sci uh, into all the science fiction creatures I could have. I'm more of a mythological creature being myself. If you can summon, you can actually summon Cthulhu in this game. Yes, you can. Which is weird because you'd think Cthulhu would be copyright, but no. No, it's not. You can summon Cthulhu. He'll destroy most anything. Including you, including you. Um, but that's one of the, that's really the the main highlight and point of this game to experiment with all the things that you can create. Yeah. Um, I we're going on over half an hour now, Shadow. So I think I think it's a good time for us to try and wrap this up. All right. All right. I do not like this game. I think it is a very good game. I really do. However. I personally will not find myself coming back to playing this again. I just find the difficulty curve in here and the non-linearity to be incredibly frustrating. It's it's why I can't finish Super Metroid. I don't know where the hell to go. It's why I can't even play Skyrim. What do I do? And it's kind of why I don't want to play any of the Elder Scrolls games. Oh my god, all of the things. Still, this is a good game. 
it's it's um it's interesting to play around with and it is fun to play once you know what the hell you're doing it's fun seeing all of the things interact with each other and the merits which we didn't actually discuss even though they're totally useless actually feel like you're accomplishing something even though you're not I right. would give this game uh, overall a 6 or 7 out of 10. I'm not entirely sure I'm going to cut it and be at 6.5. Because this, this is, in fact, a good good game, but I don't like it. Okay, so with that being said, uh, I really enjoyed this game. This is, like, one of the only games, if not the only game, where you can create whatever you want on the screen. That's and not true. you got Super Scribble Knots yet. Well... This is the only I franchise that allows you to do it. The only franchise that allows you to do this. Besides, like, maybe RPG Maker. And even RPG Maker has a very limited pool. Right. But yeah, it's just fun to be able to create things and make things interact with each other. There's even... I wouldn't call it a cheat. It's more like a glitch, really. Whereas you can summon a vending machine and hook the handcuffs to the starite and the other side to the vending machine to put the starite into the vending machine and, and then, then move the vending point. machine over to where you are right that is mean <laughs> it is it's, it makes it a little easy but it's just kind of fun to know you can do it uh, but yeah it's just a lot of fun to play around and just see what you can do. Uh, I like I like the sprites, despite I think they could have done a little better job. Mm -hmm. A lot of the sprites happen to look like they're directly out of Maple Story. Yeah, I I think with this being a DS title, they probably could have done just a little better. Yes. Uh, but I I thoroughly actually enjoyed this game, despite me getting frustrated in many levels. Especially the darkness levels. Oh, the main en the the two main enemies for platformers: darkness and ice. <laughs> uh, but if I was to going to give this game a rating, which you are, I mean, right? I am. I mean, there are a few things that annoyed me, like what you were talking about with the flying and whatnot. The controls can be a little wonky. And there are times where you just don't know what to do. I'm probably going to give this game an 8 out of 10. One other thing before we head out that I want to mention. Don't, oh God, do not play this thing on an actual DS, please. And if you can, you should get the uh, keyboard... There's someone actually made a keyboard hack for this game where you can actually use a keyboard. I prefer if you use that. Mm, yes, a lot of people. Uh, Shadow uh, was using that. I was not. But do not you play this game on an actual DS. Don't. No. Just the fact of the matter is the touch the touchscreen controls on a on uh, using a mouse alone are annoying as hell. Touchscreen controls on an actual DS will have you flipping your shit all over the place. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much all that we've got really to say. Uh, any other closing thoughts, Mr. Shadow? Uh, if you do play this game on the DS, uh, there are actually two options when you are using the keyboard thing. You can either use it like a QWERTY keyboard or you can actually write it out. Writing it out, the game doesn't always seem to get the letters correct. Yeah, exactly. like uh, between B and D, it will, it will probably screw those up. It's actually easier if you use a QWERTY keyboard. Yeah. Uh, otherwise... I I just I enjoy this game and it's really worth trying out. I think it's even if you don't like it, I still think it's worth trying out. It is worth trying out, and I and I do and I do like the concept of this franchise. But with that being said, we're done, guys. Um, yeah. This is random podcast of awesome, random podcast of awesomeness with Gurdet14 and.
And this is Shadow Wolf. Thank you for listening, and hope to see you next time, guys. All right, everybody. Be safe.